A new space race is on with very ambitious end goals like starting a permanent colony on the moon, placing the first humans on Mars, and exploring other worlds in our solar system. As part of this revival of space exploration, NASA launched the Artemis program in 2017. They have awarded multi-million dollar contracts to 3D printing construction firms with the hopes of establishing lunar colonies by 2040. Other countries have followed suit by investing heavily in 3D printing construction startups. So what's sparking this global fervor for 3D printing on the moon? How feasible is the technology in harsh lunar environments? And what does it mean for construction back on Earth? In this video, we're going to dive into the latest developments in lunar colonies, the materials we could potentially build with, and so much more. Living on the moon has been a part of science fiction for years, but it isn't something most people think they will see in their lifetimes. Establishing a lunar settlement would force us to tackle extremely complex design problems. It would also open doors to further exploration into our galaxy and beyond. One of the key components of NASA's Artemis program is the Gateway Space Station. It will orbit the moon and provide essential support for lunar missions. From lunar orbit, Astronauts will ride to the surface of the Moon, landing where no humans have ever been, the Lunar South Pole. This is the ideal location for a future base camp given its potential access to ice and other mineral resources. NASA's long-term vision is to establish a fixed habitat at the base camp that can house up to four astronauts for a month-long stay. We can't approach building a habitat on the moon in the same wasteful way that we do on Earth. There's no Home Depot we can run to for our weekend projects. We have to learn to live off the land and use local resources because every kilogram we send up there costs one million dollars. The most promising material we can use is lunar soil or regolith. Regolith is a layer of loose, unconsolidated rock and dust that sits on top of bedrock. Lunar regolith has been formed over the last 4.6 billion years from the impact of large and small meteoroids that break down surface rocks. We can excavate this powder to make a new building material. While regular concrete is composed of water, aggregate and cement, lunacrete would be made out of regolith and sulphur. Sulphur acts as a thermoplastic binding material. It can be mixed with regolith, heated to its melting point and then cooled down to make lunacrete. This sintering process can be achieved with concentrated sunlight. The resulting solid lunacrete doesn't need to be cured and it doesn't need water. Using this mixture as a base material, construction companies around the world have come up with some pretty outlandish proposals for lunar colonies. AI Space Factory recently unveiled designs for a 3D printed outpost called LENA, a lunar infrastructure asset. The company has proposed using regolith and a polymer binder to print parabolic shells. The shell would be 5 meters or 16 feet tall and meet the ground at a 70 degree angle to maximize interior space. It would be protected by a thick layer of moon dust. The habitat is designed to protect astronauts from lethal cosmic radiation, solar particle events, moon quakes, meteoroid impacts, dust contamination and cryogenic conditions experienced during the night. AI Space Factory is working on a space-rated 3D printing system designed to operate in vacuum and extreme temperatures. Another 3D printed proposal was put forward by an Australian construction startup called Luton. They have partnered with the University of New South Wales to develop a gantry-mounted printer called, wait for it, Platypus Galacticus. They claim to use computational design to develop habitats that will protect humans from cosmic radiation while optimizing the overall structure. I'm not sold on their design. What are the floor and ceiling slabs made of? How are they printed? How are those thin lunacrete walls supposed to protect humans from radiation? Don't even get me started on this IKEA furniture, floor lamps and ornamental staircases in their fly-throughs. Let's move on to what is perhaps the most popular 3D printed proposal. Icon, a Texas-based firm, received $30 million from NASA in 2020 to print the Mars Dune Alpha. 
This 1,700 square foot structure was meant to simulate a Mars habitat. It has four sleeping quarters, lavatory, work areas, laundry machines, robotics control stations, and more. Four non-astronaut volunteers have been locked inside the structure since July 2023 for a year-long experiment. I have mixed feelings about this experiment. On the one hand, it allows us to get data on how the volunteers handle physical and mental stress, isolation, resource limitation, and heavy workloads. On the other hand, the structure itself doesn't make sense to me. The 3D printed walls are just cement with red pigment. This structure could have been easily and cheaply built out of steel studs or conventional concrete. In 2022, Icon received an additional $57.2 million to develop Olympus, a 3D printing system for the moon. They have teamed up with PR Kingles Group and Search Plus to design these donut-like igloos with waffled exteriors. The team is also experimenting with simulated or synthetic regolith. Instead of a nozzle squirting out soft concrete, a high-intensity laser beam melts the powdery regolith to transform it into a hard, strong building material. Icon then sends their test prints to NASA, where they blast it with a plasma torch to 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. This test will tell us whether regolith can be used for landing pads. The next test will be operating the robot arm and laser inside NASA's thermal vacuum chamber which mimics the moon's extreme cold, heat, and vacuum conditions. This is all very exciting. I am all for progress and innovation in the construction industry, as long as it's genuine and not deceptive. While some of these design proposals may not work out, I think certain elements will trickle down to everyday consumer items and will influence construction here on Earth. Let's go over some of the advantages of 3D printing structures on the moon. The first is in-situ resource utilization or ISRU. Using lunar regolith as a building material eliminates the need to transport construction materials from the Earth to the Moon. Another advantage is the reduced launch weight and costs. By using lunar materials, we can send payloads with essential equipment and life support systems rather than construction materials. Regolith has also proven to be a strong structural material. We can use polymer binders or heat to fuse the particles together and form them into slabs. This would help us build a variety of structures from habitats to roads or shielding walls. 3D printed lunar structures can help us with radiation shielding. Using regolith's natural properties can protect astronauts from cosmic rays and solar radiation. The automation aspect of 3D printing is also very enticing. We aren't sending builders, craftspeople or building scientists to the moon at least not for the first couple of missions. The construction technology has to be simple and robust enough to work on its own. In 50 to 100 years, 3D printing could be the most reliable solution. What I find most exciting is how this will advance construction tech on Earth. Developing 3D printing technology for use with regolith can promote robotics, autonomous systems, and material science. It can push innovation in an old-school industry that is resistant to change. At the very least, it can help us develop a new cement and concrete mix with low carbon and energy footprints. Before we discuss the disadvantages of 3D printed lunar habitats, I'd like to introduce the sponsor of this portion of the video, Insulation for US, the largest US online retailer for insulation products. They offer a wide range of products, including blowing machines that work with loose fill insulation material such as cellulose, fiberglass, sheep wool, or mineral wool. I have loose fill insulation installed in my attic and I've noticed a huge improvement in comfort and energy savings. It can fill gaps, cracks, and voids and conform to various attic shapes, thus reducing the likelihood of thermal bridging. They also have a wide range of fiberglass insulation from well-known brands such as Owens Corning or Knopf. If you want to upgrade the performance of your attic insulation, head to insulationforus.com to check out all their products. You can also use promo code BELINDA5 to receive an additional 5% discount off your next order. Let's move on to the disadvantages of this tech. 3D printing is a very new technology. Companies are selling it as the holy grail of construction that is going to help us build faster, cheaper, and better. In reality, they haven't fully figured out the construction science and material science behind it yet. 
Just two months ago, a 3D printed home in Iowa was demolished before it could be completed because the walls didn't meet the 5000 PSI target set by structural engineers. If you haven't watched my video about the lies and truths about 3D printing, I'll link it up here and in the description. As I said earlier, in 50 years, 3D printing might work flawlessly, but right now we need to remember that it is in an experimental stage, especially 3D printed regolith. Ensuring consistent quality and structural integrity in low-gravity, high-radiation environments is challenging and requires advanced monitoring and quality assurance mechanisms. Another disadvantage is the variability of regolith. The composition and properties of lunar regolith can vary from one location to another, which will affect the consistency and strength of the printed structures. Environmental concerns also need to be taken into account. The alteration of the lunar surface for construction and the potential for contamination need to be carefully managed to preserve the moon's pristine environment for scientific research. Finally, the process of 3D printing with regolith demands significant energy, which must be generated and managed on the moon. In conclusion, I'm excited to see where this tech goes. But realistically, I think the first iterations of lunar habitats are going to be far more conservative and utilitarian than these renderings indicate. Just like the space station, we have to build as efficiently as we can in the smallest allowable space using the least amount of materials. When I stayed at Icon's 3D printed house in Austin, I was very impressed with the quality of the build and how well they worked with their architects and engineers. I'm going to follow this lunar habitat progress with caution but optimism. Let me know what you think about using lunar regolith in the comments. Have you come across any other lunar proposals that I didn't cover in my video? I'm now offering early access to ad-free videos on Patreon as a thank you to everyone supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and the notification bell too. Thanks for watching. See ya.